Get to him, he. Been heaven lately on my mind. Been going through a long time. It's been rough, but I'll be fine. Gotta let my light shine. I, I thought about legacy. I thought about legacy. I thought about uh, how old we all are getting. <laughs> uh, we're not uh, where we were 20 years ago. Thank God we're getting better, though. Somebody said, we're getting better. We're getting better. Yeah. Amen. But just thinking about legacy and thinking about uh, mantles, uh, leaving mantles in the earth and the importance of understanding how to be attached so that you can be eligible for a mantle. Amen. Come on in. You just don't follow religiously. You follow for the sake of legacy. But your neighbor said you must follow for the sake of legacy. You don't ever follow just to follow. You don't come to church out of obligation. You come because there's something you need to receive from those who came before you. Am I right? And it is, it is your obligation as a person that operates in a lineage to grab hold of a mantle and take it to the next dimension as time progresses. Am I right? If I would give you a definition of time, time is simply marker points for manifestations. So time is a marker points for manifestations. In other words, as time progresses or as time matures, time will demand a greater version of yourself. Am I right? You will never ever be permitted to remain the same if you advance and utilize time properly. Am I right? You are not to be who you were five years later. You should walk in a greater version of yourself. Leftovers, I don't care what y'all say, tastes better. Come on, come on, than the original meal. The food gets better as time progresses. Amen. Am I right? And as time progresses, you have to become more wise in your approach to ministry because, uh, Pastor Jones, a lot of us waste so much time with people that are not serious about legacy. Yeah. Am I right? And when you leave this world, you want to leave this world knowing that you have dropped a mantle that is uh, caught by somebody who served and followed you in some capacity. And you know that that legacy is going to be carried on because you have made sure there's a generation that came behind you that was in position to receive that mantle. Am I right? And so we, we, can, we can pass on to something greater because we understand that there is something, come on, greater coming behind us. Amen. And so we're going to look, look at the text today. We talk about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's getting ready to transition. He's moving uh, into his latter days in the earth realm. And there were some things that were very important to him as he was shifting uh, to his latter days. He had just spoken a word of prophecy and declared that I got to get up out of here. And Peter said, I can't let you die. And Jesus looks at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Come on. He wasn't calling Peter the devil. He was calling the spirit that jumped into Peter that came against the will of God concerning his life. You got to know sometimes the devil will not always come as the devil. He will jump in two people that you love in order to send you in a direction that God never told you to go in. And you've got to be so caught up in the will of God that you can hear the devil even though he sounds supportive. Sometimes he don't always come sounding like the devil. Sometimes he'll jump into somebody who you love the most. And if you don't have spiritual accuracy, you will allow a word that came from the enemy to detour you and cause you to go into a direction that God never told you to go in because of who you heard it from. You got to be so caught up in God that you're able to detect even if the devil is talking to somebody who's close to you. Get behind me, Satan. 
Because the devil will always be anybody that comes, anybody or anything that comes against the will of God for your life. That's how you can recognize him. You can't recognize him by sight. You recognize him by sound. Because he comes as a wolf in sheep. Jesus was on the boat. The, Bible, they were the disciples on the boat. Jesus came walking on water. And the Bible says they thought he was a ghost because they could not recognize him by sight. But Peter says, if this be you bid me to come. In other words, if I could hear your sound, my sheep, they know my voice. And a stranger, they won't follow. All right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. So we hear by sound. Blessed is he that believeth and have not seen. Did he that believeth and have seen? The woman at the well was talking to Jesus, saying to Jesus, when the Messiah come, he's going to teach us all things because she could not recognize him by sight. But when he started talking, she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Hello? Yes, sir. So the older you become, the more spiritual savvy you must become. You must walk in the spiritual accuracy because Peter, 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 the devil desired to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith faileth you not. Because as the generation is coming to an end, can I be prophetic for a second? Come on. We're getting ready to experience some things in the earth realm in 2024 that's going to introduce some things that are going to come in 2025. Am I right? 2024, we're getting ready to see some abnormal things happen in the earth realm. The government is about to launch their agendas. Right? There's a terminology y'all better all listen for. It's called transhumanism. All right? If I say this, say transhumanism. Transhumanism. Y'all pay attention because this is getting ready to come to the forefront. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Noah Harari. Noah Harari, they're introducing transhumanism in the earth, which means they're going to surveillance humans under the skin. They call it hacking humans. So they get ready to merge, come on, humans and devices together. This is why Bill Gates, come on, stop working on, on Microsoft and start working on vaccines. Because they're getting rid of their attempt to merge machines and humans together. You got the, the world of AI that's coming that's going to replace a lot of you in the job workforce. Right? Come on. And so these are times that are not coming. These times are what? Here. Here. We got to adjust for them because, come on, they are not coming anymore. They are here. here. You see? Martial law, you will see foreign soldiers on American soil. You will see a combination of the Old Testament and the New Testament in one in the third day. Old Testament was all about military armies fighting against you. New Testament is all about a demon and a devil. Didn't hear much talk about the devil fighting against Israel in the Old Testament. You saw them fighting against natural armies like Hittites, Hivites, Amorites. When you get to the New Testament, you don't see, come on, military fighting against the disciples. You saw more of demons and devils invading people's body and their lives. And devils was cast out. The third day will be a combination of them both. So these times are not coming. They are what? Here. Here. And if we're not spiritually ready. A lot of people are going to comply. Mm -hmm. Revelation 13 talks about that. The mark of the beast. The very chill. In which DARPA, these companies right now, are starting to put chips in the brain of people. Elon Musk. Come on. They're chipping brains right now as we speak. Revelation 13 talks about it. Unless you have the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade. Hello? So that spirit is already here. here. It's not coming. It is what? Here. Already here. And you've got to hear about it. Especially in church. Because yeah. the Bible says, 
if it would be, the very elect will be deceived. Because they're going to come into a day and a time where they're not going to be prepared for the demonic platform that the enemy will rise, will cause the rise of the earth realm. Because we're shouting, dancing, speaking in tongues, and high-fiving each other. We are not getting prepared for the times at hand. We've got to have an end-time anointing. We've got to know how to cast out demons and, come on, cure diseases. Luke chapter 9 says, and he called the 12 disciples. He gave them power and authority over all devils and all diseases. The Bible says, physician, heal it thyself. You're going to have to know how to pray here in a second. Because the biggest enemies are farmers, pharmaceutical is colliding with doctor's offices and they're doping you up the greatest new dope dealers in the earth. Go for one thing, you got 12 medications to keep you coming back. The Bible says if there be any sick among you, bring them to the elders of the church that they might be healed. We're going to need that to come into operation here in a minute. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Food is at an all-time low. That's the thing shifting in the earth realm that we're going to have to pay attention to. Come on. Like right now. So that's, just, that's just the prophetic stuff that we're dealing with, Right? So you know what I'm it's just the prophetic stuff that we're dealing with. And we got to have this, this, we got to have spiritual awareness and there has to be a spiritual awakening take place so that we can be able to deal with this stuff. The Bible says the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Treat and creation travailing unto now. Come on, crying for the manifestation of the sons of God because there are there is some people that God's going to raise up in the last day that's going to have authority to deal with that stuff. Church is changing and shifting. The Antichrist system is coming in. The Antichrist just simply means anti-Christ. They will not be anti-church, but anti-Christ. Thessalonians say they'll come in the temple and oppose to be God, and many shall say they are the Christ and shall deceive many. There's an anti-Christ system that is already in operation. These new preachers that have been raised by this new anti-Christ system. Y'all better read Revelation 13, talking about the dragon empowering the beast. The beast is a system, and then there is a So we're going to be spiritually awakened. Huh? Jesus is at his final moments. Every pastor and every leader is in the room. I want you to pay attention to this because it is very crucial when you come to your defining moments in ministry. That you examine your spiritual legacy. You got to know who's operating around you. And, uh, and the older you get, the wiser you get. You have to set people up, come on, in, in your life according to their level of spiritual maturity, power, and authority. You cannot give access to everybody in this season, even if there's some kin to you. Famous or flashy 
This ain't the hour for that. You better be in line to be effective because your life might be at stake if you don't come into a place of spiritual awakening. Yes, sir. Be careful that you don't even, come on, take your flight in the winter. He's talking about times that we've entered into now that we're going to have to have spiritual accuracy and spiritual maturity to even determine when, where, who, and what. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, let me get to it, y'all. I'm trying to get there. Goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. They said the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane it was a place of transition for him because he was feeling sorrowful in his spirit. He was feeling what? Sorrowful. sorrowful in his spirit. And he had his crew with him. You know, all of his ministry, the three years he was walking in ministry, he was encouraging everybody, preaching to everybody, feeding everybody, healing everybody, delivering everybody, setting everybody free. And then come on, everybody became a beneficiary of his ministry. And the moment he needed assistance the most, he couldn't find anybody around him that was to stay awake for one hour just to pray for him because they did not contain spiritual accuracy or spiritual maturity to not allow the devil to, well, come on, make them sleepy. I'm not talking about physical sleep here. I'm talking about to be unconscious enough to not be able to understand what type of time we're on. Come on, glory to God. Again, look at your neighbor and say, let me, let me say it like this because we got young folk in the building. To your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need some spiritual motion. Could detect what type of time he was in. He was feeling sorry for uh, Apostle all of these years that you've preached and declared the word of God and prophesied and broke the scriptures down. Glory to God and taught people in all of the years. But the last that you prayed and taught them how to pray and how to stay before the presence of God. All of these years, woman of God, you have trained the people of God how to go in the glory. Strange. All of these years, Elder Bishop Lassa, you told them to live a holy life because there was going to come a time when their holiness was going to produce an oil that was going to cause their light to stay on. Can I tell you this? Come on. Ain't no sense if you have any light without no oil. Come on. The altar produces oil. Uh, you hear some folk going after knowledge. Knowledge is light. But if you don't have any anointing, your light going to go out. And you got to have a process life that teaches you how to stay on your face because you understand the times in which you have entered into. This is not the hour that you can afford to play church and come on, try to fit in with the normal crowds to become famous and flashy. Your life will be at stake if you don't get anointed very soon. Jesus felt sorrowful. Even unto that was trying to get him to abandon his assignment. Oh, the let this come. We're talking about Jesus. If Jesus can come to such a place of sorrow, for sorrowful, sorrowful spirit, until he said, can this cup pass from me? What you think going to happen to you? Here, the word of God is being challenged. I can preach to you all year long. In the moment I need help, you can't pray with me for an hour. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's real. The moment I, I get into a season of weakness, first thing you want to do is get on your phone and call somebody and get on social media. Uh -huh. And I've prayed you out of holes, y'all they taught me. Pulled you out of ruts. Preached you out of ditches. Come on, pulled you out of pits. Y'all ain't talking to me. And the moment I need your prayers, you're not spiritual enough to detect that I need you. 
Can I talk to some leader in the house this afternoon and have said, I've come to a point in my life, hello, glory to God, where I'm tired of seeing things from a normal perspective. I believe something supernatural is about to happen. And can I tell you this? Every champion will have to go through a Calvary. You can't duck it, you can't dodge it, you can't walk away from it. Jesus said, is it necessary? Can it? If it's necessary, can this cup pass from me? Can I dodge Calvary to get to all power? But he said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. I got to go through this paradigm shift. I go to, to go through, go in, to come out. Hello? And you know, if this is going to happen, hello, I have to examine what I'm allowed in my close proximity. He goes into the, into the Garden of Gethsemane and watch how he categorizes me. First, first thing I want to point out to you, can I just be a, a regular Baptist preacher for a second? I'm going to give you three points and I'm going to get on out the door. The first principle I want to give you today, you got to learn how to put people in their proper place in their life. In your life. Can I tell you that? Come on. God, even though people, even though you got money in the bank, you have no access to the vault. Y'all ain't talking to me. You can't walk back there and go in the vault because you got money in the bank. They got boundaries set up. Hello, you got to talk to the teller. Come on, go at the teller, but go back there and get what you need. You ain't going back there. And you got to learn how to set boundaries up in your life. Everybody cannot have free course.
watch, I want y'all to pay attention to this. He did not tell the disciples, the three, at first to pray. He said, I need y'all to watch. Just be lookout men. Tell me, be lookout women. Tell me when the enemy is coming. Come on, because I can't have anybody, come on, distracting my prayer life while I'm in transition. And so I need you to be in my life. I need you to love me enough to watch my enemy. Come on, glory to God and let me know when the enemy is coming because the devil don't want me to pray and to get in the presence of God because when I get into this place, he's going to be in trouble. God's going to change my mind in my prayer. God's going to shift my mentality in my prayer. God's going to shift my life in my prayer. And so while I'm praying, I need somebody that can watch over me, that can be an intercessor, come on, that knows how to look out for me when I can't look out for myself. I need you to let me know when you have located a hater in the house. I need you to pray against that booger. I need you to send him back to the pits of hell that he may or she may not let distract my prayer because I'm looking for Three dimensions in the Garden of Gethsemane. You see the outer court, the inner court, the most holy place. You see nine stayed on the outer court. Three came into the inner court, and Jesus himself from behind the veil as a high priest by himself. The prayer came back to the inner court, didn't go back to the nine, to the three, and said, Why y'all sleep? Majority of the people that you have gained an advancement to fall asleep in your life when they think they've gotten beyond a certain level. So all of a sudden, because I've gotten beyond a certain point with you, you trust me a little bit, I think that I'm eligible for sleep. Huh? Jesus, go back to the three, find him sleep, go back again in the presence of God. Come back a second time. He said something the second time got my attention. When I was reading this, watch this. Let's, let's read it. Glory to God. Let's read it. The Bible says in verse number 40, and he came to the disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, what could ye not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. This time, verse 41, he don't, he, he don't tell them just to watch. He said, I need you to watch and pray because your crowd has got to keep you woke up. Come on, y'all been talking to me. Come on, glory to God. You need to have a prayer life that keeps you awakened so you won't lose your assignment. Where there's no assignment, there is no eligibility for a blessing. And some of you miss your blessing because you didn't obey your assignment. You wanted to preach and God only wanted you to watch. And you got to be good with that assignment of watching just like you're good with that assignment of doing. He said, this time I want you to watch and pray that ye enter not into what? Temptation, that the spirit indeed is what? Willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away the second time and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if this cup may pass away from me, except I drink it, that thou will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, and their eyes were very heavy. They were not in a spiritual place to receive the mantle because they were not disciplined enough to stay awake. What am I saying? This church full of masters. Y'all, the church loving God, fearing family. It is your responsibility to make sure the generation behind you stay awake. Yeah. and stay proud because their turn is going to have to come you won't be with them always Hello, and you will do them a disjustice if you don't train them on how to stay awakened even when the whole entire world is falling Watchful and prayerful, and that will allow you 
to never go to sleep. Right? He went his way again the second time, and he prayed that the cup passed from me. And he came and found him asleep again. Died of hair. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now. Take your rest. Behold, the hour hath the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man has been betrayed in the hands of sinners. He said, Rise, let us be, be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. And here comes Judas walking with the enemy. Now, now I want y'all to notice something, and I, I'm going to let y'all go. I might not even, I ain't even know how to do it. One last. <laughs> Judas came walking up with his enemy. Judas was supposed to be sitting. But instead of sitting, he was wandering around. had no business talking to. Being so misinformed that he neglected his assignment, a simple assignment was to just sit here until I come back. All of a sudden Judas shows up with this enemy. Watch this. And kisses him on the forehead which is a sign of false worship. False worship will birth spiritual betrayal. Hello? And whenever you betray the very anointing that's responsible for your life, then your destiny is at stake. Hey, take Jesus and give Judas the bag. Look at your neighbor and say, I'd rather have him than the bag. We'll go after the bag. Come on, say, I'd rather have him than the bag. Come on, glory to God. Don't you let money, fame, riches, fortune causes you to miss him because you're going after the bag. I'm telling you, I want to suggest to you today, you got to stay alert. You got to stay awakened. You got to stay at the altar. You got to stay anointed because if you don't stay anointed, you're going to be re-altered in the wrong direction. And if you alter in the wrong direction, you're going to betray the very anointing that you're supposed to carry. But let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, then all of these other things shall be added. When you remain assignment oriented, you won't have to look for a bag. The bag will look for you. Are you hearing me? The Bible says the blessings then will run you down and overtake you and bless you. Y'all know, know the Bible. Bless shall you be in the city and bless shall you be in the field and bless shall you be going in and bless shall you be coming out. And Jesus stood firm as a leader and told everybody that slept on him, sleep on and take your rest. Can I prophesy to somebody in the room today? There are some people that you love the most that fell asleep on you. But you got to be bold enough in the Holy Ghost to know what you carry. I want you to touch yourself and say, I carry some precious cargo. I carry some things that eyes have not seen, neither ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of man that which God hath prepared for them that love him. This is going to be a season that you got to walk with your head. Master, 
children. Come on. Hard to build the right team. Can't quit, I must keep faith. 